morning everybody today i'm going to do something different to what i normally do what am i going to be doing i'm starting to show i've been doing lessons on affinity designer but i do not use it in the way the expert designers use it in so when you look at videos a lot of the videos are creating beautiful designs and everything like so. However, I do it to teach people that there is life beyond craft artists. We always worry if craft artists go, what are we going to do? Well, affinity designer can do what we're used to do in craft artists. And over the few, last few months, actually, I started last August, I have two classes and I've been teaching them all there is to know on how to do what we did in Craft Artist, how to do it in Affinity Design. And today I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a video. Now I'm not going to show you how I made it all look like Craft Artist, that sort of thing. But I'm going to show you how nice it is if you come to create a background using craft artist uh, affinity. Um, I'm going to show you a few things you could be doing. But again, it's just to show you that you can still work in the same way we used to work before. So thank you, Serif, because although it's not quite the same, it's still very good, uh, if not better. There are some things that are better. One thing that we found is missing that we used to love in craft artists is the gradient picker. So in craft artists, I can show you what we used to do shortly. In craft artists, we used to, and I do comparison be between the two when I do these lessons, because people needed to see how they did it, how I taught them to do it, and how they can do it now. And it's brilliant. And you know what? I'm not showing it today, but some people said, oh, you can't have pages. Well, yes, you can. I found a way of having pages, too. But for now, that's out of the uh, criteria for what I want to show you today. So let's have a look while that opens. It takes a while for my craft artist, but I had a hiccup yesterday, which I now sorted. Right. So when you look at the picker, and you click and drag, you can only drag one color. Wherever you stop, that color will be picked up in the node there, and you can use that color. However, in Craft Artist, so Serif, if you're listening, please do take heed. In Craft Artist, we used to have a picker. When you click on it, it brings up a toolbar up here, and it said Gradient Picker. So that means that if you go on a gradient picker and you pick it up from there all the way to there, it will do you a lined picker in there. It's brilliant. I'll see if it came up. Here it is. I'll show you what I mean. Because when you see, you understand. So let's get that flower I was using on the other one. Make it a bit bigger. If I use the gradient picker here, look what happens. I click on the gradient picker or sampler. I go from green to pink to purple. And I get those colors in here. So now if I do a box and I fill it in, I've got all the colors that came from that pick, right? And again, if I wanted to, I can even adjust them. So it depends on how you pick them up. But if I go on to the pick there, I can move them down. And I can adjust my colors. But they're the colors that the system picked up for me from the image that I actually went over. Right? And you can have the colors you want. And then when you place that on top, can you see how? Let's bring it to front. You'll see how. And this one, I mean, if you wanted to, you can even. 
go a little bit more to town. Whoops, not there. Hold on. I clicked on the wrong one. Sorry. Let's take remove shadow. Uh, let's click there. If I take that one and place it there, and then take that one and place it in the other corner, and you see, I can make a beautiful background that will match exactly right to the color of the flowers that I'm having. However, we can't have that in Affinity, and we all wish we could, because I think it's a brilliant um, tool. If Serif can, well, I know Serif can do that, but if they're happy to do it for us, we will be eternally grateful. Now, back to what I want to show you today. I'm going to take all these off. And then here, if I'm making a square card, I will decide what I need. So I've got the squares, got the shapes, like we're heading craft artists. I'm going to draw my shape there. And I'm going to go and give it a color. And I'm going to do a color that's, let's say, from one of my lovely flowers. I'm going to place a flower there. I'll put it on the side. There is a way um, if you want to see what's on the side, because that's another thing I didn't like at the beginning, thinking, well, I can't see like I do on Craft Artist. Well, you can. By magic, there you go. I can still see it when it's on the desk. I call that black area the desk. It, that is by clicking the backslash next to the Z button on your keyboard. It will show you what you've got on the desk if you put it halfway it still shows what went off page so you know exactly where you stand so i'm going to pick up a color from there and i'm going to go for one of these dark purples or bluey purple there and i'm going to fill my box with that color now i'm going to do another square so i'm making a card and I can tell you where these images came. So when I do the video, I'll put you a shortcut to where these beautiful images came. They're all from um, Creative Fabrica. The only thing I have to tell you is I am an affiliate of Creative Fabrica. And of course, if people do go in and buy, I do get a percentage. Sometimes it's only 3p. Sometimes it could be a, a dollar. So it's not much. But I'd love to let you know that if you do go and buy it from my link, I will get a little bit of a commission or anything that you would have uh, bought. Okay. Right. So having that clear, I'm going to go and align. Now, my alignment is up here. I always think of it as we do it in Craft Artists. I'm going to align them. And that's my two boxes. And now on this one, I'm going to start placing my design. Now, one thing you might say, oh, but you know what? I don't want, let's, let's have it come out. I want that flower coming out to the edges. But then I get the bird. Let's see. Let's bring a bird in. And I'm going to place that bird just about there. Okay. And I'm going to bring in another set of flowers. And these I'm going to do up here. I'm going to make them a bit bigger just to show you. I'm going to turn them around. But you know what? I only want them in the corner like that. And I only want them to go into on the white corner. I, I don't want it to touch the blue. So it looks as if the blue is a layer. So what you do in layers, and don't worry too much because in my, um, if anybody had to come to lessons, I do all these things a lesson at a time. But here you go. I'm going to place it inside that rectangle. So if I don't want the images to go on top, across, all I do is place it in the box where it should go. 
and that now cuts it where I want it. Can you see? Now I need to put a little happy birthday message. So I'm going to do happy. I'm going to do birthday. Don't worry, I always split the words, my ladies will tell you. And then I'm going to do the name of the person I'm giving it to. Let's do Robin. That's very good for that. So, how am I going to now sort them out? Happy? I'm going to make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to leave it that type of font. But birthday, I'm going to change it. And I'm going to go into my, where it says, Arial and find a nice birthday design. Make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to place it just about that. And that one, I'm going to put it just about there. So I'm going to have happy birthday. And then Robin. I'm going to, again, change the font to... Now, let's have a look. I'm going to go there, find the same font. That's the one I used. Make it a bit bigger. Place it on there. And I've got happy birthday, Robin. Okay. Now, again, pick up a couple of colors you like. So I might say I'm going to use that color. And I just fill it up. it up and then Robin I could even pick up a color from there or leave it the same color or it or or pick up one of the purples and see how that would look now actually let's undo that I would prefer the red one so happy birthday I'm gonna put Robin there okay now I'm going to bring in another little robin just to fill up this corner. Oh, I didn't want to. Oh, I brought them in from the wrong place. So I'm going to amass it. Bring in that little robin. Make it a bit bigger. And there you go. Happy birthday, robin. It's a lovely little card that I can use. I will put the, sh the link. There's, there's only five birds and two flowers in this kit, but it's quite a nice little kit that you can add to any others. Now, I'll just show you. I create these uh, flowers, for instance, so I can go in there, and if I wanted to, just to show you, bring something in from another kit. So when you do these things, okay, we used to say, oh, we can't use our digikit. No. Well, yes, we can, because you can put digikits in here. But, and it's not that difficult to do, but you know what? I love the way that these work. Or maybe I could put it here. There's more room. Whoa, hold on. There is more room for it over here. I'm going to place it there, turn it around a little bit more to make it look as if it's in his mouth. And there you go. Now, can you see all my digikits, all my, and I have digikits in here, look, because I found an easy way of bringing in digikits in here. Let me see. I think I called it my digikit. There it is. And you can have Alfie, uh, Farmyard Pet. So you can have the digikits ready in there to use as and when you like. And they're still nice and big. Okay? So that is how you can easily make cards with affinity in the same way we do it in our 
craft artist. For now, that's all. I hope you liked this video. And please do subscribe and leave me a thumbs up if you're interested in my affinity videos. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.